Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack. This is your daily update for May 13th, 2020. I'm gonna cover a couple of areas of strategic importance and, and I wanna begin with the whole question of the significance of moving to LaRouche's four power cooperation as the basis for transforming the current dysfunctional and dangerous paradigm into one of peaceful economic cooperation. Uh, you have on the one side this opportunity for peaceful cooperation versus British geopolitics, which pits nations against each other, defines interests narrowly as, as opposed to the general common aims of mankind. And what we've seen in, in recent years is that this geopolitical doctrine has been behind the unending succession of little wars, which actually add up to something quite big. As President Trump has said, $7 trillion of wasted money, wasted American lives and wasted lives of the countries we've invaded and attacked, and at the same time has done nothing to build up national security. Now, people should think about this question of the cooperation and a new Bretton Woods as opposed to confrontation, when you raise the question of, we wanna get back to normal, we wanna reopen the economy and go back to normal. But let's face it, normal was not so good. You may have some uh, idea that it was certainly better than being cooped up at home, especially if you have young kids running around, as I do. Uh, it may be that the idea of normal is going to the beach, getting drunk, going to play bingo or whatever, but the idea of normal is within the old paradigm. And people who are saying we've got to get back to the economy, back to what we had, are making a huge mistake. That economy, which you thought was so good, was crashing in September before there was ever any indication of the coronavirus. What we had is what's known as the American consumer economy. And this is an economy which is a globalized economy, which was built on the destruction of the American system economy that was built up during World War II, which enabled us to win that war, and then which continued through the early years of the Cold War, when we had an emphasis on science and technology, leading to unprecedented levels of growth of productivity and the building of a prosperous, secure middle class. All of that started to be wiped out, step by step, drip by drip, beginning after the assassination of John F. Kennedy and Nixon's decision to end the Bretton Woods system and go into a floating exchange rate system that was favorable to speculators, who then built the casino economy, which is collapsing today. Now, the whole thing was built on cheap labor by outsourcing American manufacturing and industry and even agriculture, we got back cheap goods, but at what price? We lost our industrial base. We lost a huge chunk of our skilled labor force. There was a shift of the workforce from goods producing activity into so-called consumer and service economy. Uh, this included the fragile supply lines, which have become an issue uh, in the recent months as the coronavirus has shut down significant aspects of world trade. And the whole point of globalization was what? It was to provide cheap goods in America, but huge profits for the corporate cartels that outsourced the industry and, and began producing the products we consumed in other countries. And on top of it, it was all built on debt, corporate debt, government debt, and consumer debt. And the economy, which is supposedly the strength, the stock market, the various kinds of investment and trading operations, well, much of that was bets on whether or not the debt would be paid. This is now increasingly the case where you have junk bonds being issued by corporations. You have the Federal Reserve buying the junk bonds, creating a more healthy market for companies to sell bonds who use the bonds to buy their own stock, but not invest in new plant and equipment, new technologies, uh, expanded workforce, and so on. The bet is, will the debt be paid? 
And if not, what happens? Well, if you're big enough, you get bailed out. That's normal. That's what people assume, or actually most people don't assume it. They just think, well, we'll get back to something that was better. But that was not better. That was crashing. And if you go back to that, we're going to have a crashed out economy with almost no jobs. So what's the alternative? Well, go back to the principle of Bretton Woods, which was summarized by Lyndon LaRouche in his proposals for a four power agreement. Did you have the four major industrial economies and, and physical economies in the world, Russia, China, India, and the United States, if we get back to being a physical economy, which are not dependent on the funny money schemes of the city of London and Wall Street. Right now we have a dollar-based system which is collapsing. We see it with what's happening with the oil prices. We see it in terms of the needs of, uh, for production of industrial goods, the collapse of the auto sector, the collapse of construction. But we need all these things. How do you get them? You have to go to a credit system which provides credit not for speculation but for production. We are putting out a pamphlet called The World Needs 1.5 Billion New Productive Jobs. And it raises the whole question of, of building new platforms of global infrastructure, power, water, transportation, based on science and technology, emphasis on education, and of utmost importance is the development of a new, higher quality global healthcare system to protect against future pandemics. In the United States, we need investment in public health. Uh, around the world, including in the United States, we need to concern ourselves with the nutritional standards, which are collapsing as the food production is collapsing into a just-in-time, quick-buck speculative gain made by cartels, instead of a regulated agricultural system which ensures that farmers can stay in business but you can have an adequate supply of cheap nutritional food. So that means LaRouche's four powers go outside of the paradigm controlled by London and Wall Street and the shadow banking system back to a regulated banking system and a credit policy not controlled by the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank run by the, pri the biggest private banks, but a credit system under the Treasury, which makes sure there's credit for production but not a penny to bail out speculators. And you can go to our website to see this report uh, that'll be out, I think it's out already, the, the, or the beginnings of it is already out. The world needs 1.5 billion new productive jobs. Now let me just touch on two other stories. One is the continuing fallout around Russiagate and the Flynn case. This is not over yet. The judge, Emmett Sullivan, is, is still yet to weigh in, and we'll see what he says. But keep in mind, in December 2018, he essentially accused Flynn of treason. He raised the question, should you not be charged for treason? And was very vicious in his attack on Flynn. So we'll see what happens when, when he presides over this, but the Justice Department has dropped the case. And so it should be just pro forma that he would follow suit, but you never know. Now, to try to influence him, the same gang of deeply entrenched Justice Department permanent bureaucracy, in this case, mostly retired or former Justice Department officials, uh, about 2,000 of them signed a petition for Attorney General Barr to be fired or to resign. Now, they claim that the decision by the Justice Department in the Flynn case uh, is an example of a violation of the rule of law. What about what the FBI did? Was that the rule of law to induce someone to lie so you can convict them? Which they stated in their own words. Where's the rule of law when you bankrupt someone like Michael Flynn or in another case uh, from Russiagate, Roger Stone, where you bankrupt them and force them to plead against the president as the Mueller commission was trying to do in order to get a lesser sentence? Roger Stone would not turn against Trump. And even though Flynn initially agreed to cooperate, he withdrew that. So that's why the, you have these Justice Department officials defending the kind of corrupt standard practices that are used to get convictions. So hopefully this uh, ruling of the Justice Department will stand. 
Just look back at the FISA court violations that were exposed by Horowitz, the inspector general. Uh, he didn't say anything about uh, the FBI was justified, that these are legitimate cases. He, he identified 17 cases of fraud and corruption by the FBI. So keep that in mind as we see what happens with Judge Sullivan. Now finally, we have, I, I don't know if this is a negotiating tactic or what, but we have a lunatic named Peter Navarro, who's clearly hostile to China in the extreme, who's putting out statement after statement against China. Uh, China lied, people died. China should pay up to $10 trillion for the damage they've done. Uh, to show you how unhinged he is, in a statement yesterday, he said the U.S. economy was strong and beautiful until the Chinese Communist Party dropped a virus on the world, and that has temporarily shut us down. Now, Navarro is obviously not a competent economist because the United States economy was not strong. The speculative system was strong because it was backed up by unlimited money from the Federal Reserve, which created unsustainable levels of debt, which distracted and took away investment into the real economy. And so now Navarro is saying, well, we're going to use this crisis to bring back the jobs, bring back the production. How are you going to do that with a Federal Reserve system which rewards speculators and swindlers but penalizes producers. And then how do you do it when you blame China, which is a country that could be cooperating with us and we could be cooperating with China on the Belt and Road Initiative. The statements of uh, Navarro remind me of uh, John Bolton, who apparently for a while President Trump liked to have around to uh, convey a hardline image, but ultimately sabotaged the negotiations with North Korea, threatened to get us into a war with Iran, and now Navarro is playing a much bigger game, uh, creating an enemy image of China which could lead to war. This has to stop. Someone like Navarro has no business being in the Trump administration, and hopefully he's not being listened to. But there are states that are now suing China, uh, there's now uh, supposedly an investigation by the intelligence community, even though the intelligence community said there's no evidence that this virus was man-made or escaped from a lab in Wuhan. So we've got to get back to cooperation, back to the principles of Bretton Woods, and out from under a geopolitical doctrine which has not only failed, but threatens the world with a new devastating war. That's my report for today, and I'll see you again tomorrow.